Welcome to the Fit Small Business QuickBooks Online Training Course. In this lesson, we're going to cover how to manage credit card sales with an Intuit Payments account in QuickBooks Online. To follow along with me, log into your QuickBooks Online account now or click the link below for a free 30-day trial of QuickBooks Online. You can also click this link to access our full QuickBooks Online course and other helpful resources. Let's get started. Nowadays, most people don't carry cash and fewer people are writing checks. To make it convenient for your customers, you will most likely need to accept credit cards as a form of payment. Credit card processing companies offer this service for a fee, of course. The fees charged vary across merchants, so you want to do your research before you sign up for an account. Be sure to read our article on best credit card processors for a comparison of top providers. We have done a lot of the legwork for you. One of the benefits of using QuickBooks Online is the ability to sign up for an Intuit Payments account. An Intuit Payments account will allow you to accept credit card payments in QuickBooks Online. Some of the benefits of using an Intuit Payments account are, since Intuit Payments is integrated into QuickBooks, your accounts and financial statements are always up to date. By simply clicking a Pay Now button on their emailed invoices, your customers can make payments online. You are able to accept payments on the go. By using the QuickBooks Online mobile app, you can accept a payment from your mobile device. Payments are deposited to your bank account on average within two to three business days after the transaction date. As we discussed in the How to Receive Payments lesson and How to Record Sales Receipts lesson, there are two ways that you can record customer payments in QuickBooks. Click here to access either of these lessons now. If a customer pays you immediately, you would record a sales receipt. However, if you have a credit sale, which means that your customer pays you sometime in the future, then you want to record an invoice in QuickBooks. Let's begin with the sales receipt. From the home page, click on the plus sign at the top of the page, and below the customer's column, select sales receipt. The create sales receipt window will display. We'll go ahead and complete these fields for our fictitious company, Pulse Plumbing. From the drop down, you want to go ahead and select the customer. Once you do that, the billing address information will automatically populate. This information is coming directly from the customer profile. In the How to Set Up Customers lesson, we walk through step by step to show you how to set up your customers in QuickBooks. Click here to access this video tutorial. The sales receipt date should be the date that you made the sale. Payment method is going to be credit card. and From the drop down, you want to select that. Right below this field, we are going to click on enter credit card details and go ahead to enter the credit card information for our customer. Starting with the credit card number, you want to go ahead and enter that. Once you've entered that credit card information in here, to the right, QuickBooks will show the type of card that this number is for. So that way you can verify that. You want to enter the expiration date for the card. You want to enter the name on the card as it appears. And you want to also enter the customer's billing address. If any of this information does not match, the credit card charge will not be approved. Right below these fields, you'll see a checkbox that says use this credit card in the future for this customer. So QuickBooks will save this information so that next time when you come in here, it's already there for you. So let's go ahead and click OK. And that will take us back to our sales receipt. We can go ahead and finish completing this. The deposit to field. This is the bank account that you want this credit card payment to be deposited to. If you want to change the account, you can do so in this screen. To ensure all credit card payments are deposited into the right account, you want to go ahead and go to the How Do I Record Credit Card Deposits in QuickBooks Online section of this lesson. From the drop down here under products and services, you want to select the product or service that you sold to your customer. Once you do that, the description field is going to automatically populate based on the information that you have set up for this product or service. You can also type a custom description directly in this field. If you have a quantity for this sale, you want to go ahead and enter that information here. And then in the rate field, this is the cost per product or service. This field will automatically populate based on the way you have the product or service set up. 
you can also type a rate directly in this field. The amount column is going to be calculated by multiplying the quantity times the rate, which QuickBooks will do that for you. In the lower left hand corner, we have a message box. You can type a personal message that will appear on your customer's sales receipt in this box here. On the right hand side, QuickBooks has indicated the amount received. So this is just basically indicating that the customer is making the payment now with the credit card and so the balance due will be zero. Once you save the sales receipt, there are a couple of things that take place behind the scenes in QuickBooks. The first thing is the email window will open up so that we can review the email that your customer will receive along with their PDF copy of the sales receipt. So we'll go ahead and click save and send here. And here's the screen where we can make changes and customize the email that will go to our customer. So we can make changes to the subject line or we can leave the default there and we can make changes to the actual email in the body of the, in the box that says body there. On the right hand side is a preview of the sales receipt that will be attached to this email that will go to our customer. Once we have made any necessary changes, we can click the send and close button. The credit card payment will be processed and the sales receipt marked as paid in QuickBooks. If the credit card is declined, you will see a message pop up on the screen to indicate this. QuickBooks will allow you to save the sales receipt form. Once you receive another method of payment from your customer, you can come back to the sales form and enter the new credit card information. Refer to the written lesson to see how the sales receipt and the credit card payment will affect the financial statements. Let's go ahead and take a look at the credit card processing transaction. So let's navigate back to the customer center by clicking customers on the left hand side and we'll scroll down and locate our customer. And the most recent transaction will appear at the top. So there's our sales receipt. If we click on that and open that up, there is a link right below the credit card field that says transaction processed. If you click on that, you will see the details of the credit card that you just processed. And so notice this has been approved. And at this point we have the option to void the transaction or we can just print this information out. Now let's go through the steps to record a credit card payment for an invoice. You would use this method to manage your credit card sales if your customer will pay you sometime in the future. So from the plus sign at the top, you want to go ahead and click on receive payment and the receive payment window will display. So we'll complete these fields for our fictitious company, Pulse Plumbing. From the drop down, we'll go ahead and select our customer. And what will happen is any outstanding invoices for the customer that you selected will appear at the very bottom of the screen. You want to select the date that your customer is making the payment for the payment date. We'll go ahead and select credit card for our payment method. From the deposit to drop down, you want to select the bank account that the credit card payment should be deposited to. You can change this account by clicking the drop down and selecting the account that you want these payments to go to. We will talk about how to set up a default account for all credit card payments in the next step. Next thing you want to do is go ahead and select the invoices that your customer is paying. For this particular customer, there's only one outstanding invoice, so we'll go ahead and select that. QuickBooks will automatically populate the payment field with the amount of the invoice and the amount received field here. And then finally, you want to go ahead and enter the credit card details for our customer. So we'll click on the enter credit card details link here to do that. The first field is a credit card number, so we'll go ahead and enter that 16 digit number. Similar to what we saw in the sales receipt payment window, the type of card will appear once we have entered all 16 digits. In the next field, you want to enter the expiration date for the card. The next field is the name on the card, how it appears, and then finally the billing address for your customer. Again, we have the option to save this credit card information for the future. So you can leave the checkbox mark below there if you'd like to save that information. And then we can go ahead and click OK. Once you have made all of your changes, you can go ahead and click the send and close button here. Behind the scenes, QuickBooks will save the payment and the credit card payment will be processed. 
If the credit card is declined, you can still save the payment. Once you receive another method of payment from your customer, you can come back to the invoice and enter the new credit card information to process the payment. Refer to the written lesson to see how the credit card payment will affect the financial statements. Let's go ahead and navigate back to the customer center so we can go ahead and see that the payment was correctly applied to the invoice. So click on customers on the left hand side and then click on your customer. And then we want to go ahead and scroll down to the invoice that we just received the payment for. Once we locate that invoice and display it, it should show paid in the upper right hand corner. And then we've also got a link that says one payment was made and the date of that payment. Once you have processed credit card payments in QuickBooks, the next step is to record the deposit of those payments into your bank account. Depending on the type of credit card, payment may not show up in your bank account for several days. However, when it does, if you have an Intuit Payments account, it will automatically appear in the account that you selected when you set up your Intuit Payments account. So we can go ahead and verify the account that credit card deposits and credit card processing fees will be categorized to. In order to do that, we need to go ahead and go to our account settings. So in the upper right hand corner, you want to click on the gear icon, select company settings, And then on the left hand side, click on the payments tab. So the section here that says recording accounts, you can click in that section and it will activate these fields so that you can actually make changes if you'd like. So the first option here is where should we record payments deposits? So this is where should your credit card deposits be recorded? So you want those credit card payments deposited to the bank account that you select here. And then underneath that is where do you want the credit card processing fees to be categorized? So this is your opportunity to select the expense account that you want those fees charged to. If you don't have the account set up, you can click the link here that says add new and create the account directly from this screen. Be sure to watch our video tutorial on how to set up your chart of accounts where we walk you through step by step how to set up your accounts in QuickBooks. Once you have made your selections here, you can save your information. That wraps up the lesson on how to manage credit card sales with an Intuit Payments account in QuickBooks Online. To access our full QuickBooks Online course or any of the other lessons in this series, click this link. You can also find a link below this video for a free 30-day trial of QuickBooks Online. If you have feedback about this course or if you have any questions, please leave a comment below. Also, don't forget to subscribe.